This video features an audio reading from the Tibetan Book of the Dead regarding the bardo of the wrathful deities. Now it will be taught how the bardo of the wrathful deities appears. Up to now, there have been seven stages in the dangerous pathway of the bardo of the peaceful deities. And by being shown at each of the stages, even if he has not recognized at one, he will have at another, and boundless attainments of liberation occur. But although many are liberated like this, sentient beings are great in number, bad karma is very strong, the veils of error are heavy and thick, the unconscious tendencies last for a long time, and this cycle of confusion and ignorance neither wears out nor increases. So there are many who are not liberated, but wander downwards, although they have been shown accurately in this way. So then, after the meeting by the peaceful deities, and Vidyadharas and Dakinis is over, the fifty-eight blazing, blood-drinking, wrathful deities will appear, transformed from the previous peaceful deities. But now they are not like they were before. This is the bardo of the wrathful deities, so one is overpowered by intense fear and it becomes more difficult to recognize. The mind has no self-control and feels faint and dizzy, but if there is a little recognition, liberation is easy, because with the arising of overwhelming fear, the mind has no time to be distracted, and so it concentrates one-pointedly. If one does not meet with this kind of teaching now, even an ocean of learning will be no use. At this point, even teachers who observe the monastic rule and great philosophers are confused and do not recognize, so they go on wandering in samsara. It is even more so for ordinary people Escaping from the intense fear, they fall into the lower realms and suffer misery. But a tantric yogin, even if he is the lowest of the low, will recognize the blood-drinking deities as yidams as soon as he sees them, like meeting old friends, so he will trust them and merging inseparably with them, become a Buddha. The secret is that in the human world, he visualized the forms of these blood-drinking deities and worshipped them. And even if he only looked at their images drawn in pictures or three-dimensional figures and so on, he will recognize the forms appearing here and attain liberation. But however much effort the philosophers and teachers who observe the rule made in religious practice, and however clever they were at preaching the scriptures in the human world, when they die there will not be any signs, such as jewel-like relics, rainbows, and so on. While they were alive, they cast abuse at the Tantras and could not accommodate them in their minds. They did not know the Tantric deities. Therefore, they cannot recognize them when they appear in the Bardo either. Suddenly seeing something they have never seen before, they think of it as an enemy and feel aggression towards it and as a result they go to the lower realms. That is the reason why, 
However good those philosophers and observers of the rule were, since they did not practice the tantras, signs such as various kinds of jewel-like relics and rainbows do not occur among them. A follower of Tantra, even if he is the lowest of the low, however coarsely he behaved in this world, and however uncultured and unrefined he was, even if he was unable to practice the Tantric teachings, just because he had faith in the Tantras, and did not have any doubt or disbelief, will attain liberation at this point. So although his behavior was unconventional in the human world, when he dies at least one sign, such as jewel-like relics or rainbows, will appear. This is because this tantric teaching has very great power. Tantric yogins who are above average, who have meditated on the generation and perfection stages and practiced recitation of heart mantras and so on, need not wander so far down in the bardo of dharmata. But as soon as they stop breathing, the vijyadharas, warriors and dakinis will invite them to the pure realm of space. As a sign of this, the sky clears, and they dissolve into rainbow light, and rain of flowers, fragrance of incense, sounds of musical instruments in the air, light rays, jewel-like relics, and so on appear. These are the signs. Therefore, those philosophers and observers of the rule, followers of Tantra, who have let their Samaya practice degenerate, and all ordinary people, have no means except this great liberation through hearing. Meditators who have practiced the great symbol and great completion, meditations and so on, recognize the luminosity in the bardo of the moment before death and reach the dharmakaya, so it is absolutely unnecessary to read this great liberation through hearing. If they recognize the luminosity during the bardo of the moment before death, they will reach the dharmakaya. If they recognize during the bardo of dharmata, when the peaceful and wrathful deities appear, they will reach the sambhogakaya. If they recognize during the bardo of becoming, they will reach the nirmanakaya and be born in a better situation where they will meet with this teaching. And since the results of actions continue in the next life, that is why this great liberation through hearing is a teaching which enlightens without meditation, a teaching which liberates just by being heard, a teaching which leads great sinners on the secret path, a teaching which severs ignorance in one moment a profound teaching which gives perfect instantaneous enlightenment so that sentient beings whom it has reached cannot possibly go to lower existences. Both it and the liberation through wearing should be read aloud, for the two combined are like a golden mandala inlaid with turquoise. Now that the great necessity of the liberation through hearing has been taught in this way, it will be shown how the bardo of the wrathful deities appears. Calling the dead person three times by name, one should say these words, O child of noble family, listen without distraction. Although the bardo of the peaceful deities has already appeared, 
you did not recognize, so you have wandered further on to here. Now on the eighth day, the blood-drinking wrathful deities will appear. Recognize them without being distracted. O child of noble family, he who is called glorious great Buddha Haruka will emerge from within your own brain and appear before you actually and clearly. His body is wine-colored with three heads, six arms, and four legs spread wide apart. The right face is white, the left one red, and the center one wine-colored. His body blazes like a mass of light. His nine eyes gaze into yours with a wrathful expression. His eyebrows are like flashes of lightning. His teeth gleam like copper. He laughs aloud with shouts of alala and haha, and sends out loud whistling noises of shoo. His red gold hair flies upwards blazing. His heads are crowned with dried skulls and the sun and the moon. His body is garlanded with black serpents and fresh skulls. His six hands hold a wheel, in the first hand on the right, an axe in the middle, and a sword in the last, a bell in the first on the left, a plowshare in the middle, and a skull cup in the last. His consort, Buddha Krodishvari, embraces his body, with her right hand clasped around his neck, and her left hand holding a skull full of blood to his mouth. He sends out loud palatal sounds, and roaring sounds like thunder, Flames of wisdom shoot out from between the blazing Vajra hairs on his body. He stands on a throne supported by Garudas, with one pair of legs bent and the other stretched out. Do not be afraid of him. Do not be terrified. Do not be bewildered. Recognize him as the form of your own mind. He is your Yidam, so do not be afraid. He is really blessed Vairokana with his consort, so do not fear. Recognition and liberation are simultaneous. When this is said, you will recognize the Yidam, and merging inseparably with it, become a Buddha in the Sambhogakaya. But if he is afraid of it and escapes and so does not recognize, then on the ninth day, the blood-drinking manifestation of the Vajra family will come to invite him. So to show him again, one should call the dead person by name and say these words, O child of noble family, listen without distraction. On the ninth day, the blood-drinking manifestation of the Vajra family, called Blessed Vajra Heruka, will emerge from the eastern quarter of your brain and appear before you. His body is dark blue in color, with three heads, six arms, and four legs spread wide apart. The right face is white, the left one red, and the center one blue. His six hands hold a Vajra in the first on the right, a skull cup in the middle, and an axe in the last, a bell in the first on the left, a skull cup in the middle, and a plowshare in the last. His consort, Vajra, 
Krodishvari embraces his body with her right hand clasped around his neck and her left hand holding a skull full of blood to his mouth. Do not be afraid of him. Do not be terrified. Do not be bewildered. Recognize him as the form of your own mind. He is your Yidam, so do not be afraid. He is really blessed Vajrasattva with his consort, so have devotion. Recognition and liberation are simultaneous. When this is said, he will recognize the Yidam and merging inseparably with it, become a Buddha in the Sambhogakaya. But if those whose karmic darkness is great are afraid of it and escape, and so do not recognize, then on the tenth day the blood-drinking manifestation of the Ratna family will come to invite them. So to show him again, one should call the dead person by name and say these words, O child of noble family, listen without distraction. On the tenth day, the blood-drinking manifestation of the Ratna family, called Blessed Ratna Huruka, will appear before you from the southern quarter of your brain. His body is dark yellow in color, with three heads, six arms, and four legs spread wide apart. The right face is white, the left one red, and the center one blazing dark yellow. His six hands hold a jewel in the first on the right, a trident bearing three human heads in the middle, and a club in the last a bell in the first on the left, a skull cup in the middle, and a trident in the last. His consort Ratna Krodishvari embraces his body, and her right hand, with her right hand clasped around his neck, and her left hand holding a skull full of blood to his mouth. Do not be afraid of him. Do not be terrified. Do not be bewildered. Recognize him as the form of your own mind. He is your Yidam, so do not be afraid. He is really blessed Ratna Sambhava with his consort. So feel longing. Recognition and liberation are simultaneous. When this is said, he will recognize the Yidam and merging inseparably with it, become a Buddha. But if, even after being shown like this, he is pulled back by evil unconscious tendencies, and is afraid and escapes, and so does not recognize the Yidam, if even when he sees Yamantaka, he does not recognize him, then on the eleventh day, the blood-drinking manifestation of the Padma family will come to invite him. So to show him again, one should call the dead person by name and say these words, O child of noble family, listen without distraction. On the eleventh day, the blood-drinking manifestation of the Padma family called Blessed Padma Haruka, will emerge from the western quarter of your brain and appear before you clearly in union with his consort. His body is dark red in color, with three heads, six arms, and four legs spread wide apart. The right face is white, the left one blue, and the center one dark red. His six hands hold a lotus in the first on the right, a trident bearing three human heads in the middle, and a rod in the last, a bell in the first on the left, a skull cup filled with blood in the middle, 
and a small drum in the last. His consort, Padma Krodishvari, embraces his body, with her right hand clasped around his neck, and her left hand holding a skull full of blood to his mouth. Do not be afraid of him. Do not be terrified. Do not be bewildered. Be joyful and recognize him as the form of your own mind. He is your Yidam, so do not be afraid. Do not be terrified. He is really blessed Amitabha with his consort. So feel longing. Recognition and liberation are simultaneous. When this is said, he will recognize it to be the Yidam, and merging inseparably with it become a Buddha. But if, even after being shown like this, he is pulled back by evil unconscious tendencies, and is afraid and escapes, and so cannot recognize the Yidam, then on the twelfth day, the blood-drinking manifestation of the karma family will come with the gauris, pishakis, and yoginis to invite him. If he does not recognize, he will be afraid. So to show him again, one should call the dead person by name and say these words. O child of noble family, listen without distraction. When the twelfth day has come, the blood-drinking manifestation of the karma family, called Blessed Karma Haruka, will emerge from the northern quarter of your brain and appear before you clearly in union with his consort. His body is dark green in color, with three heads, six arms, and four legs spread wide apart. The right face is white, the left one red, the center one majestic dark green. His six hands hold a sword in the first on the right, a trident bearing three human heads in the middle, and a rod in the last. A bell in the first on the left, a skull cup in the middle, and a plowshare in the last. His consort, Karma Krodishvari, embraces his body with her right hand clasped around his neck and her left hand holding a skull full of blood to his mouth. Do not be afraid of him. Do not be terrified. Do not be bewildered. Recognize him as the form of your own mind. He is your Yidam, so do not be afraid. He is really blessed Amogashidi with his consort, so feel intense devotion. Recognition and liberation are simultaneous. When this is said, he will recognize the Yidam, and merging inseparably with it become a Buddha. Through the instruction of his guru, he will recognize them, as his own projections, the play of the mind, and he will be liberated. It is just like seeing a stuffed lion, for instance. He feels very frightened if he does not know that it is really only a stuffed lion. But if someone shows him what it is, he is astonished and no longer afraid. So here too he feels terrified and bewildered when the blood-drinking deities appear with their huge bodies and thick limbs filling the whole of space. But as soon as he is shown, he recognizes them as his own projections or as yidams. The luminosity on which he has meditated before and the self-existing luminosity which arises later, mother and son, merge together. And like meeting someone he used to know very well, the self-liberating luminosity of his own mind 
spontaneously arises before him, and he is self-liberated. If he does not receive this showing, even a good person can turn back from here and wander in samsara. Then the eight wrathful gauris and the pishakis with various heads will emerge from within his own brain and appear before him. So to show him again, one should call the dead person by name and say these words, O child of noble family, listen without distraction. The eight gauris will emerge from within your own brain and appear before you. Do not be afraid of them. From the eastern quarter of your brain, white gauri will appear to you, holding a corpse as a club in her right hand, and a skull cup filled with blood in her left hand. Do not be afraid. From the south, yellow cowrie, shooting an arrow from a bow. From the west, red pramoha, holding a sea monster banner. From the north, black vitali, holding a vajra and a skull cup filled with blood. From the southeast, orange pukasi, holding entrails in her right hand and eating them with her left. From the southwest, dark green gasmari, drinking from a skull cup filled with blood, which she holds in her left hand and stirs with a vajra in her right hand. From the northwest, pale yellow kandali, tearing a head and body apart, holding the heart in her right hand and eating the body with her left. From the northeast, dark blue shmashani, tearing a head and body apart and eating. These eight gauris of the directions surrounding the five blood-drinking harukas will emerge from within your own brain and appear before you. Do not be afraid of them. O child of noble family, listen without distraction. After them in turn the eight pishakis of the holy places will emerge and appear before you. From the east, Sinhamuka, wine-colored, lion-headed, with her two hands crossed on her breast, holding a corpse in her mouth and tossing her mane. From the south, Vyagrimuka, red, tiger-headed, with her two arms crossed pointing downwards, her eyes staring and her teeth snarling. From the west, Shirgalamuka, black, fox-headed, holding a razor in her right hand and entrails in her left, eating them and licking the blood. From the north, Shivanamuka, dark blue, wolf-headed, carrying a corpse to her mouth with both hands, her eyes staring. From the southeast, Gurdramuka, pale yellow, vulture-headed, carrying a large human corpse over her shoulder and holding a skeleton in her hand. From the southwest, Kankamuka, dark red, hawk-headed, carrying a large flayed skin over her shoulder. From the northwest, Kakamuka, black, raven-headed, holding a skull cup in her left hand and a sword in her right, and eating a heart and lungs. From the northeast, Ulumuka, dark blue, owl-headed, holding a vajra in her right hand and a sword in her left, and eating. These eight pishakis of the holy places 
surrounding the five blood-drinking Harukas, will emerge from within your own brain and appear before you. Do not be afraid of them. Recognize whatever appears as the play of the mind, your own projections. O child of noble family, the four goddesses of the gates will also emerge from within your brain and appear before you, so recognize them. From the eastern quarter of your brain, Ankusa, white, tiger-headed, holding a goad and a skull cup filled with blood, will emerge and appear before you. From the south, Pasha, yellow, sow-headed, holding a noose. From the west, Shunkala, red, lion-headed, holding an iron chain. And from the north, Ganta, green, serpent-headed, holding a bell. These four goddesses of the gates will emerge from within your own brain and appear before you. Recognize them as Yidams. O child of noble family, after the thirty wrathful Harukas, the twenty-eight Yuginis will emerge in turn from within your brain and appear before you with various heads and bearing various symbols. Do not be afraid of them, but recognize whatever appears as the play of the mind, your own projections. At this moment of reaching the crucial point, remember the instructions of your guru. O child of noble family, from the east, the six yoginis of the east will emerge from within your brain and appear before you. Rakshasi, demoness, wine-colored, with the head of a yak, holding a vajra in her hand. Brahmi, orange, serpent-headed, holding a lotus in her hand. Mahadevi, great goddess, dark green, leopard-headed, holding a trident in her hand. Loba, greedy, blue, mongoose-headed, holding a wheel in her hand. Kumari, virgin, red, with the head of a yellow bear, holding a short spear in her hand, and Indrani, white, with the head of a brown bear, holding a noose of entrails in her hand. Do not be afraid of them. O child of noble family, from the south, the six yoginis of the south will emerge from within your brain and appear before you, Vajra, yellow, with the head of a pig, holding a razor in her hand. Shanti, peace, red, with the head of a sea monster, holding a vase in her hand. Amrita, nectar of immortality, red, scorpion-headed, holding a lotus in her hand. Khandra, moon, white, hawk-headed, holding a vajra in her hand. Danda, club, dark green, fox-headed, holding a club in her hand. And Rakshasi, demoness, dark yellow, tiger-headed, holding a skull full of blood in her hand. Do not be afraid of them, O child of noble family. From the west, the six yoginis of the west will emerge from within your brain and appear before you. Bakshini, eater, dark green, vulture-headed, holding a club in her hand. Rati, pleasure, red, horse-headed, holding a large corpse's trunk in her hand. Mahabala, great strength, white, Garuda-headed, holding a club in her hand. Rakshasi, demoness, red, dog-headed, cutting with a vajra razor in her hand. 
comma, desire, red with the head of a hoopoe, shooting an arrow from a bow in her hand, and Vasuraksha, protectress of wealth, dark green, with the head of a deer, holding a vase in her hand. Do not be afraid of them. O child of noble family, from the north, the six yoginis of the north will emerge from within your brain and appear before you. Bayu Devi, wind goddess, blue, wolf-headed, waving a flag in her hand. Nari, woman, red, buffalo-headed, holding a stake in her hand. Varahi, sow, black with the head of a sow, holding a noose of teeth in her hand. Vajra, red, with the head of a crow, holding a child's skin in her hand. Maha Hastini, elephant, dark green, elephant-headed, holding a large corpse in her hand and drinking its blood. And Varuna Devi, water goddess, blue, serpent-headed, holding a noose of snakes in her hand. Do not be afraid of them. O child of noble family, the four yoginis of the gates will emerge from within your brain and appear before you. From the east, white Vajra, cuckoo-headed, holding an iron hook in her hand. From the south, yellow Vajra, goat-headed, holding a noose in her hand. From the west, red Vajra, lion-headed, holding an iron chain in her hand. And from the north, dark green Vajra, serpent-headed, holding a bell in her hand. These four yoginis of the gates will emerge from within your brain and appear before you. These twenty-eight yoginis arise spontaneously from the play of the self-existing form of the wrathful Harukas, so recognize them. O child of noble family, the Dharmakaya appears as the peaceful deities out of part of the emptiness. Recognize it. The Sambhogakaya appears as the wrathful deities out of part of the luminosity. So recognize it. If at this time, when the fifty-eight blood-drinking deities emerge from within your brain and appear before you, you know that whatever appears has arisen out of your own radiant insight. You will immediately become a Buddha, inseparable from the blood-drinking deities. O child of noble family, if you do not recognize in this way, you will be afraid of them and escape, and so go on to more suffering. If you do not recognize in this way, you will see all the blood-drinking deities as lords of death, and you will fear them. You will feel terrified and bewildered and faint. Your own projections will turn into demons, and you will wander in samsara. But if you are neither attracted nor afraid, you will not wander in samsara. O child of noble family, the largest bodies of these peaceful and wrathful deities are like the whole sky. The medium ones are like Mount Meru, and the smallest ones are like eighteen of our bodies, one on top of the other, so do not be afraid of them. All phenomena appear as lights and images. By recognizing all these appearances as the natural radiance of your own mind, your own radiance will merge inseparably with the lights and images, and you will become a Buddha. O child, whatever you see, however terrifying it is, recognize it as your own projection. 
recognize it as the luminosity, the natural radiance of your own mind. If you recognize in this way, you will become a Buddha at that very moment, there is no doubt. What is called perfect, instantaneous enlightenment will arise on the spot. Remember, O child of noble family, if you do not recognize now and are still afraid, all the peaceful deities will appear in the form of Mahakala, and all the wrathful deities will appear in the form of the Dharma king, the lord of death and you will wander in samsara with all your projections turned into demons. O child of noble family, if you do not recognize your own projections, even though you have practiced dharma for an eon and are learned in all the sutras and tantras, you will not become a Buddha. But if you recognize your projections with one secret and one word, you will become a Buddha. If you do not recognize your projections, they will appear in the form of the Dharma King, the Lord of Death, in the bardo of Dharmata as soon as you are dead. The largest bodies of the Lords of Death fill the whole sky and the medium ones are like Mount Meru. They will come filling the whole universe. With teeth biting the lower lip, glassy-eyed, their hair tied on top of their heads, with huge bellies and thin necks, holding the records of karma in their hands, shouting strike and kill, licking up brains, tearing heads from bodies, pulling out internal organs. In this way they will come, filling the whole universe. O child of noble family, when projections appear like this, do not be afraid. You have a mental body of unconscious tendencies. So even if you are killed and cut into pieces, you cannot die. You are really the natural form of emptiness, so there is no need to fear. The lords of death, too, arise out of your own radiant mind. They have no solid substance. Emptiness cannot be harmed by emptiness. Be certain that the external peaceful and wrathful deities, the blood-drinking Harukas, the animal-headed deities, the rainbow light, the terrifying forms of the lords of death, and so on, have no substantiality. They only arise out of the spontaneous play of your mind. If you understand this, all fear is naturally liberated, and merging inseparably you will become a Buddha. If you recognize in this way, they are your yidams. Think with intense longing. They have come to invite me in the dangerous pathway of the bardo. I take refuge in them. Remember the three jewels. Remember your own yidam. Call his name and supplicate him with these words. I am wandering in the bardo, so be my rescuer. Seize me with compassion, O precious Yidam. Call your Guru's name and supplicate him. I am wandering in the bardo, so be my rescuer. With your compassion do not abandon me. Supplicate the blood-drinking deities with longing and say this inspiration prayer. When through strong unconscious tendencies I wander in samsara, in the luminosity of abandoning all fear, may the blessed ones, peaceful and wrathful, go before me, the wrathful goddesses, queens of space, behind me, help me to cross the bardo's dangerous pathway, 
and bring me to the perfect Buddha state. When parted from beloved friends, wandering alone, my own projections empty forms appear. May the Buddhas send out the power of their compassion, so that the bardo's terrors do not come. When the five luminous lights of wisdom shine, Fearlessly may I recognize myself when the forms of the peaceful and wrathful ones appear. Fearless and confident may I recognize the bardo. When I suffer through the power of evil karma, may my yidam clear away all suffering. When the sound of dharmata roars like a thousand thunders, May it all become the sound of the six syllables. When I follow my karma without a refuge, may the Lord of great compassion be my refuge. When I suffer the karma of unconscious tendencies, may the samadhi of bliss and luminosity arise. May the five elements not rise up as enemies. May I see the realms of the five Buddhas. Say this inspiration prayer with deep devotion. All fears will disappear, and you will certainly become a Buddha in the Sambhogakaya. So it is very important. Do not be distracted. These words should be repeated three or up to seven times. However great the sins and however bad the remaining karma may be, it is impossible not to be liberated. But if whatever is done for them they do not recognize, then they have to wander in the third bardo, the bardo of becoming, so its showing will be taught in detail below. Most people, whether they were much or little adept in meditation, are very confused by fear during the bardo of the moment before death, and so they have no means except this liberation through hearing. To those who have meditated a lot, the bardo of Dharma talk comes suddenly when their mind and body separate. Those who have recognized their own mind and become experienced while they were alive are very strong when the luminosity appears during the bardo of the moment before death. Therefore, practice during life is most important. And those who, while they were alive, have meditated on the generation and perfection stages of the tantric deities are very strong when the peaceful and wrathful visions appear during the bardo of dharmata. Therefore it is extremely important to train the mind thoroughly in this liberation through hearing in the bardo, especially during one's life. It should be grasped, it should be perfected, it should be read aloud. It should be memorized properly. It should be practiced three times a day without fail. The meaning of its words should be made completely clear in the mind. Its words and meaning should not be forgotten, even if a hundred murderers were to appear and chase one. Since this is called the great liberation through hearing, even people who have committed the five deadly sins will certainly be liberated if they only hear it. Therefore it should be read aloud among great crowds and spread afar. Even if it has been heard like this only once and the meaning not understood, in the bardo state of mind becomes nine times more clear. So then it will be remembered with not even a single word forgotten. Therefore, it should be told to all during their life. It should be read at the bedside of all the sick. It should be read beside the bodies of all the dead. It should be spread far and wide. To meet with it is great good fortune. 
It is hard to meet with except for those who have cleared away their darkness and gathered merit. If one hears it, one is liberated simply by not disbelieving. Therefore it should be greatly cherished. It draws out the essence of all dharma. The end of the showing of the bardo of dharmata, called the great liberation through hearing, the bardo teaching which liberates just by being heard and seen. Sarva Mangalam. Thank you for watching. Please like and share this video, hit the subscribe button, and feel free to ask me any question in the comments section below. Due to the sacred nature of these videos, I would prefer to keep them ad free. Please help me to do that by clicking the Patreon link in the description box below and make a donation to this channel. Every dollar counts. Thank you for your support.